emergency broadcast. We're sorry. All circuits are busy now. Will you please try your call again? Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the comms prepper with a video on some basic test equipment. I'm trying to use the good cameras so we can get good high definition video here so you can see the controls. So if my camera movement seems awkward, I apologize. You know, I'm getting used to this camera and don't have the best tripod. The first piece of equipment we're going to look at here is the MFJ 259B SWR antenna analyzer. And this is a pretty neat piece of test equipment. I think it's around 250 bucks. And what this allows you to do is test your antennas and your coax. There's a lot of capability in this thing, but from a prepper's perspective, you can use this to make sure when you're cutting an antenna that you're getting close and the SWR or the residence of the antenna is going to be good enough before you hook it up to your very expensive equipment. Now I'm going to try to move the camera here without being too jerky with it. And yep, sorry about that. And here you can see this piece of coax coming in from the top. And that actually connects to my VHF UHF antenna outside. So we're actually going to tip the camera down here again so you can see the dial here. And I'm going to try to zoom in on the faceplate and actually show you what this thing does. All right, so we got the camera adjusted there. I apologize for that cut there. So what we have here in the display down here is we have a tune button. And this actually rotates clockwise and counterclockwise and it'll change this frequency up here and that's actually a little sample of that frequency we're putting out to the antenna and over here is where we can select the frequency band this will go down to 1.8 megahertz down here to 4 meg then 4 to 10 then 10 to 27 27 to 70 70 to 114 and then 114 to 170 so for amateur radio purposes or prepper purposes uh, this covers your HF radio bands here and then you can actually get the 6 meter band here or low band public safety. Then over here you're getting the aviation band and that would primarily be for people who are pilots and are setting up antennas for aviation. But then in here from 114 to 170 that covers amateur radio and the MERS frequencies. Now the antenna I have on the roof, you've seen a previous video if you follow my channel, is a uh, a little fiberglass whip antenna we put over the garage and that's a 2 meter or VHF and a 70 centimeter or UHF antenna. So in the display right now I have 145.24 megahertz and that's about the middle of the VHF amateur radio band. So what I'm going to do here is I'll rotate this tune knob and adjust this frequency and you can actually see the SWR change and show you where this antenna is good. So right now we're in the middle of the amateur radio 2 meter band and I'll rotate the frequency down and you can see the SWR climb. So there's 2 to 1 and that's about the limit of what manufacturers will recommend. So this antenna starts to look good at 142 megahertz just outside the amateur radio band. As I enter the amateur radio band you can see this needle dropping. Now we're down to 1.5 megahertz. We're still good. 144 megahertz, that's definitely in the middle of the amateur radio 2 meter band. We're bottomed out there about 1.1 to 1, which is perfect. And then as I raise in frequency, 147, 148, now I'm out of the amateur radio band. But the antenna is still good. And if I keep going, let's say up towards the MERS channels, and they start at 151, now the antenna SWR is too high. We're at 2 to 1. So just as we're hitting the MERS frequencies at 151, the SWR is too high, which means this antenna is too long. You'd actually have to cut some off of the antenna to make it good. And if I hit the top part of the MERS frequencies at 154, that's too high. You would actually start damaging your equipment. You're well above 3 to 1 on SWR. So this antenna, if hypothetically you were doing this for MERS, is too long. You'd have to trim it. But if you roll this back into the amateur radio band, that's a perfect antenna and that works really well. So this is a pretty neat piece of test equipment. I'm going to make an HF antenna in a future video and we'll actually use this to make sure I'm cutting the antenna length on a dipole perfectly before I actually hook it up to the radio. So that's the MFJ 259B antenna analyzer. I think they're about 250 bucks like I said. And I'll put a link down below where you can see this on their website. And you can see how we can sweep the frequencies on that antenna. So that's that piece of test equipment and we'll go ahead and shut that off 
and it's got a recessed hole here so you don't accidentally bump the button turning it off while you're testing and actually from bumping the button when you're packing it up and burning up your batteries. So I moved the equipment around here so we can get better focus. The next piece of test equipment we're going to talk about is a frequency counter and this is the MFJ886 and I'm not quite sure what this costs but again I'll put a link down below and this is just an over-the-air frequency counter. It has a telescopic whip antenna here and I'll tip this down so you can see it. It connects to the top. That's the BNC connector and hopefully we get that right back where we wanted it so it's in focus and it's scanning it's looking for an input so let's say somebody shows up with a radio let's say here the comms prepper helpers Disney radio and it says channel 4 but you're not sure what frequency that is so all you have to do is transmit and the frequency counter will lock up it's 462 635 and you can actually move the zeros out but that tells me that's an FRS radio and that's the frequency it's operating Copy. on. Or somebody could show up with another type of FRS or GMRS radio and you can set this up here and hit the push to talk. That's 462.562. So you know what frequency that is. So pe people have a lot of different equipment and not all manufacturers put the same frequencies in the channel assignment name. I'm going to slide over here and get another radio. And where having a frequency counter can become relevant, especially if you're buying used equipment, is if you get a radio like this Kenwood TK190. There's uh, no frequency display in that. It's whatever it's programmed in there, and you may not know what's in that radio. You might buy something online, or somebody comes to your retreat location with a radio, and you want to make sure it's operating on the right frequency or being legal. You can actually check that radio against this frequency counter and find out what the operating frequency is and if you need to reprogram it or change other radios to match it. So there's two basic pieces of test equipment that can help you out with your communications package or plan and they're not that expensive relatively and that's the antenna analyzer the MFJ259B and the MFJ886 frequency counter and as always thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel this has been the comms prepper with a brief video on basic test equipment for radio communications.